Hello, I'm Dr. John Cavanaugh, and welcome to AJS 101, Introduction to Criminal Justice, Lesson 7, Part 1. This chapter is about how the courts work at the federal, state, and local levels. Now, the United States has 51 court systems, one in each state, and the federal court system. There is no single court system for the entire country at all levels of government because the founders of our government feared an all-powerful and oppressive government, so they decentralized the power of the courts. So let's first talk about the state courts. Most state courts have three court levels, trial, appellate, and state supreme court. The lowest level is the trial court level. And on the bottom of the trial court level is, are the courts of limited jurisdiction. These courts hear um, less serious cases like traffic infractions uh, and violations. And judges usually decide guilt or innocence. And there are no transcripts kept. A transcript is a written record of what goes on in the court. It looks very much like the script of a play where the name of the person uh, appears followed by what the person actually said. And if things were moved around or shown, uh, that is listed as uh, defendant X, you know, stood up or, you know, uh, approached so-and-so. So it's kind of like a uh, play script. And the reason why transcripts are important is that it, it, they provide a written record of what happened so that if there's an appeal to a higher court, the judges that are uh, reviewing uh, the appeal uh, can see exactly what happens so they can rule better on the appeal. And, and finally, uh, in these limited jurisdiction courts, the procedures tend to be informal. You generally don't have to have a lawyer. Uh, you drive around, you see these courts. They're sometimes called municipal courts. They're sometimes called justice of the peace courts. Maybe you've gotten a speeding ticket uh, uh, and you've gone there uh, for, for your case. Uh, the next up, the scale, are the general jurisdiction and special jurisdiction courts. Now, these courts can hear any case, but they generally hear more serious cases. And they also may handle appeals from the courts of limited jurisdiction. Now, at the general jurisdiction and special jurisdiction levels, remember, these are above the limited jurisdiction levels, the procedures are formal, and they involve prosecutors, which are lawyers hired by the state to prosecute people, and defense attorneys, who, in order to appear before a court, have to be lawyers who have been admitted to the bar. Uh, and at this level, uh, you have an adversarial proceeding. In other words, the two attorneys, the prosecution and defense, battle each other with facts in an attempt to convince uh, the jury, or sometimes the judge, if the judge is deciding, but at this level, juries usually decide uh, the final verdict. There are also special jurisdiction courts, and they hear special cases, uh, like divorce courts, which would handle family matters, uh, juvenile courts, which would handle young people charged with criminal, uh, criminal crimes, uh, probate courts, which handle uh, estates, what to do with people's property after they die. Those are special jurisdiction courts. And again, they're also formal and lawyers are involved. Now, above the level of these trial courts, you have the state appellate courts. And many states have one or two tiers of appellate courts. Now, what is an appeal? An appeal is when one party in a lower court action ask a higher court to review uh, perhaps a judgment uh, or a ruling or an order of a lower court. To conduct the review, the appellate judge or judges, sometimes there is a three or five judge panel, read the written records of a lower court, the transcripts, and they sometimes might hear oral arguments from the lawyers representing both sides. When an appellate court finds in favor of the appealant or the appellant, and against the appealee, the court remands, which means sends back the case to the lower court for a new trial, or perhaps if the error was not really serious, a directive to correct the error and resume the, the lower court uh, adjudication. When a conviction is overturned by an appellate court or a statute is ruled unconstitutional, the ruling, the losing party can appeal all the way up to the state Supreme Court. 
Now, defendants who claim that their federal rights were violated can also appeal directly to the Supreme Court or to the local federal district court. But that's only if you're claiming a violation of the U.S. Constitution, which is considered a more serious procedural violation. So again, let's recap. You have your, your trial courts, uh, limited jurisdiction for minor stuff, general and special jurisdiction for more serious things. If at the uh, limited jurisdiction level, somebody thinks the judge made a mistake, uh, you can do an appeal up to the general jurisdiction court. Uh, although that appeal becomes somewhat difficult because there's no transcript. Because at the limited jurisdiction level, you may recall, they don't do transcripts. When errors are made uh, in the general jurisdiction or special uh, jurisdiction courts, those appeals go to the state appellate courts. And there you have panels of judges which review the transcripts and may take testimony from the lawyers to see if, in fact, an error was made by the judge uh, in the lower court, or perhaps uh, information was stated that shouldn't have been made known to the jury by one of the attorneys. And it's serious enough to require uh, that the uh, ruling or the judgment or a verdict uh, has to be reversed or sent back for a, a do-over, so to speak. Okay, let's move on. The highest court in each state, and there's only one in each state, is the state Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court is the highest court in the state, and they only hear appeals. Uh, these court, state Supreme Courts usually have seven to nine justices, depending on the size of the state and the number of cases that are heard. Uh, and these justices choose the cases they wish to review. If you're a limited jurisdiction, general special jurisdiction, you're a state appellate court, you have to entertain all of the cases that come to you. The Supreme Court, because there's only one court and has limited resources, they pick and choose the cases which they believe uh, need to be heard. Now, let's move on to state court administration. The day-to-day -day operations and the long-term planning of state courts are so complex that courts generally hire uh, non-lawyer administrators to run them. And these administrators pay the bills, hire and fire personnel other than judges, uh, prepare the budget, perform liaison services with other branches of government, and, and perform a host of other administrative duties. In the old days, uh, the chief judge was the court administrator. Uh, and this was problematic because judges are lawyers trained in law in law schools. They are not administrators who have MBAs or other business degrees, which is what you need if, you, if you're going to run some sort of government or even private operation or business. Uh, so the courts rely on non-lawyer administrators to actually do their day-to-day -day operations, pay the rent, make sure that the heat is on, hire, fire, and all the other tasks that have to be performed. You also have, uh, in state courts, uh, dispute resolution centers. In order to relieve the courts from ever-growing caseloads, some states have set up informal dispute resolution centers, and they attempt to resolve minor uh, criminal matters using defendant-victim mediation. Uh, mediation is when a neutral third party sits in a room with the disputing parties and attempts to broker a compromise or a deal so that they can settle without going to a trial and, and, and other things like that. Uh, so those are the dispute resolution centers that try to relieve the courts of, of some of their burden. All right, let's go into the federal courts. The federal courts were created in the United States Constitution. And the federal courts deal with cases arriving from the uh, federal law, uh, treaties, um, and the U.S. Constitution. So the federal courts deal with cases arising from treaties, federal law, the U.S. Constitution. And the federal courts operate on a three-tiered system. There is the district courts, there are the courts of appeal, and the Supreme Court. And as you may now notice, that's very similar to the state courts, where you have the, the trial courts, which are, in this case, the district courts, the appellate level, and then the Supreme Court. Let's first start with the federal district courts. These consist of, not, the U.S. is divided into 94 districts, and they are throughout the United States and its possessions, uh, like Puerto Rico. 
Uh, now, these district courts are trial courts that have original jurisdiction over all violations of federal law. And the judges, these district court judges, are appointed by the President of the United States, but they must be confirmed, they must be approved by the Senate. And they serve for life. This makes them uh, independent of political pressure. Now, there are also magistrates who assist district court judges at the district level by holding arraignments and also issuing warrants to federal law enforcement personnel. And these magistrates are lawyers, uh, they're like judges, but uh, they're not quite as high. Uh, they don't do trial cases. They, they handle the arraignments of, uh, of the um, federal prisoners, and they also issue the warrants. So they're kind of helpers. All right. So that the district court level of a trial court level, the federal government, that's if trials, guilt or innocence is decided. Uh, or if it's a, a non-criminal court, they rule for one party or the other. Above them are the U.S. Courts of Appeals. And there are 13 of these courts that cover the United States, and they hear, obviously, appeals from the district courts. Appeals are usually heard by panels of three judges, although more important cases may be heard by a full panel of six judges. And remember, appeals are when one of the parties from the lower district court claims that the judge made a mistake or some serious procedural error occurred, and uh, Whatever the judge did, a ruling uh, about admitting evidence or a verdict, needs to be overturned or corrected. So that's what happens at the U.S. Court of Appeals level. And right above them, the highest court in the nation, one single court, is the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, it's located in Washington, D.C., and it is made up of nine justices, one of whom is the Chief Justice, and the others are called uh, associate Justices. Uh, Chief Justice today is, is uh, Chief Justice Roberts. The Justices are nominated by the President and they have to be confirmed by majority vote of the U.S. Senate. And Supreme Court Justices serve for life. We want to make them independent of political pressure and public pressure so they don't have to worry about being reappointed by politicians or elected by, by the population. The Supreme Court has the power of judicial review over all federal cases and any state case where constitutional issues arrive. arise. The Supreme Court is the ultimate interpreter of the Constitution and the laws of the United States. And the federal court, the Supreme Court, is the only trial court when states have a legal dispute. Otherwise, it is an appeals court. The U.S. Supreme Court almost always handles appeals. However, the one case where they become a trial court is when one state sues another state. This doesn't happen that often, but it occasionally happens. Uh, one case that comes to mind was an interesting case, oh, decades ago, uh, over uh, in which state was the Statue of Liberty uh, located uh, in. Uh, you had the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, and it's right between New Jersey and New York. And based upon uh, maps and title ships and what have you, uh, New Jersey was claiming that the Statue of Liberty was in fact in New Jersey and not in New York. And that dispute was settled by the U.S. Supreme Court. And where, what state do you think now uh, can claim uh, to house the Statue of Liberty? New York or New Jersey? Surprise answer, New Jersey won that case. Okay. For the U.S. Supreme Court, cases come from lower federal courts and from state Supreme Courts, again, when there are federal constitutional issues involved. Now, in order for a case to be heard by the U.S. Supreme Court, four Supreme Court justices must agree to hear the case, and the decision must be arrived at by a vote. And in the Supreme Court, cases are decided by majority vote. So you have nine justices, five or more, must vote uh, uh, in, a, in a case to determine which way the ruling goes. When the Supreme Court decides uh, to review a case, it issues an order to the lower court to send all the paperwork to the Supreme Court. And this order is called a writ of certiorari. So it's a special court order. It's kind of like a subpoena duques tecum, uh, which is a subpoena to bring documents. 
Well, in the case of the Supreme Court, when they want to review a case, they want all the stuff the lower court has. So they or they uh, basically issue a writ of certiorari, and they say, bring us everything so we can review it. Now, of course, the justices themselves don't review all of these documents. They have court clerks who review them. And these court clerks, by the way, are lawyers. They're law school graduates, uh, and they are the top graduates in the nation. It's considered a great honor to be a clerk for a Supreme Court justice. I know clerk sounds like a lowly file cabinet person, but uh, not in this case. Now, and uh, in closing, the U.S. Supreme Court hears less than what percent of the cases sent to it? Remember, this is one court for the entire nation. It, it takes appeals from all the federal courts and from state Supreme Courts. So of all the cases sent to it, what percentage do you think it hears? And the answer is only 1%. It's extremely selective. Uh, so that ends this lesson concerning the uh, structure of the courts uh, at the state, which includes local and federal level. And in the next lesson, we're going to talk about the people who work in the court and the process of uh, how a case goes, a criminal case goes through. Uh, so until then, uh, uh, study these notes and you can then move on to lesson seven, part two.